Welcome everybody to uh, our weekly Christ-Centered Chiropractic webinar. And really excited about this one. We're talking about the upcoming uh, Michigan Christ-Centered Chiropractic events. Uh, really excited about that. Last year, you know, we did that event at the Gilead Center. Of course, just a ridiculously great speakers with uh, Dr. Schiffman, Roberto Monaco, uh, Dr. Jean Guy, who runs the Gilead Center, Dr. Matt Tamer, you know, some of the biggest chiropractors in history. And obviously, Roberto, one of the best chiropractic communication leaders in history. But for me, I'm really excited about Dr. Callie Seymour, uh, because I've become a big fan of yours over the years here that we've known each other years, like we've known each other for decades, but it's been a few years. And, what, and I, there's a lot of what you've been doing that I, I really, really love and appreciate. And I think it's going to really speak to our audience now and transform this Michigan event uh, when you're there uh, at, on the platform. Uh, so first of all, you know, just tell us about yourself because you got a lot of different things going on that are really remarkable. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to uh, speak at this event and just really just glorify God and what he's done in my life and how, uh, how he's developed certain things that look like they were going north. <laughs> I mean, look like they were going south and like rough and north completely. Um, so yeah, I'm Dr. Callie Seymour. I was a practice owner. I'm not a practice owner anymore, but I'm part of an amazing team at Scenic City Clinic. Uh, and then I do do personal coaching on the side and I have a uh, weight loss program called the Warriors Weight Loss Program that I'm getting ready to launch here uh, in about three to four weeks. So super excited about that. You know, we homeschool, we do a lot of ministry stuff. Um, it's just, uh, we do a lot, yeah, <laughs> so. Yeah, so, I, well, first of all, I live in the South, so I wonder, like, it's going South. That's it, like, how did we get, <laughs> how do we get connected to when things are going bad, they're coming to Florida. You know, Florida, I think, is a good place to be, especially right now. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of uh, scriptures that I'm reminded of when I think about you. You know, one, one is the fact that uh, God has told us that Jesus came so that we would uh, not be robbed from, killed, or destroyed, but we would live life abundantly. Uh, there's another great scripture in Ephesians where we're told that you know, there are glorious riches for those of us who believe. Yeah. Now, obviously, in, in the Christian community, you, know, you, you look to avoid like what they would call the prosperity gospel. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the reason for that misunderstanding of scriptures like that, it's not that because you love Jesus, he just makes you rich and you're healthy and everything's perfect. Right. I think you, know, you, you and I could you know, spend hours discussing how it's been beautifully, completely imperfect. But yes. the reality is what I lo what really love about your career and the things that you're doing, um, first of all, is, is this need to be creative. So we get to a time like COVID or, or, you know, whatever recession or economic issues we've had over the last several decades. And, and yes, regardless of your belief in God, it can be a tough time. But then there's always the ability to become creative. Uh, to keep pressing on with your new idea until it becomes a reality. And you've done so much of that these last few years. You've been very creative, come up with new plans and ideas to become successful despite, you know, what has been a volatile environment. Yeah, you know, for me, it comes down to trusting God. It's, it's, a, com it's a complete trust issue. It, it, and I would say it probably on some level always has been, but I would say that's the biggest thing that he's done in me or transformed me is to trust him when nothing looks like, you know, you, you understand it or trust him to have divine ideas and creative ways to accomplish things that you could have never come up with on your own, that it maybe doesn't even look like are necessary for this season. And, and just getting comfortable, a little bit more comfortable with the unknown, the part that you don't know, you know, and just taking that next step of, obedience or that faith step or, or whatever and just watching what he does with that because the thing he tells you to do sometimes it's just a matter of just do the thing it may not be the thing but it may be the next thing that leads to the thing <laughs> and so for me it's become a major uh, a major growth in trust because if you think about I mean just think even about the whole salvation plan like that's the most creative way to deal with the sin issue <laughs> That, that could have ever been accomplished and man couldn't come up with that. And we can, we can become so wise in our own eyes when 
we see the political environment and the financial environment and the, the healthcare environment, and we can get these concepts of what we think needs to happen next, forgetting sometimes or maybe displacing the fact that he's got an unbelievably more uh, in-depth, vast, and creative plan than we could have ever accomplished on our own. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to take your mind and spirit and put it in a lot of other doctors, <laughs> uh, just because, you know, when you talked about it, I, I love when you said, and that's going to lead into my next question, that I did the thing, and even if it didn't work out, it still took me towards the next thing. That, that there's these series of, there's that, there's that book series called A Series of Unfortunate Events, the Lemony yeah. Snicket, I think I'm saying that right, Lemony Snicket or something. <laughs> um, but that you did, there's actually a series of fortunate events that God has laid out a path. And, and yes, parts of that early path often don't work out, but it's not that it failed, it was the next thing. You know, though a righteous man or woman fall seven times, they will rise again and we keep failing forward. And, and I remember when I first met you, I was at the clinic uh, there, there in Tennessee, and you were, at the time you were doing, there was, there was that weight loss thing where you have like a sauna and there's the wraps and all that. And so that had, you had mentioned that that hadn't gone great. And, and that, and clearly if people have to go in the sauna and get wrapped, like that's a really kind of cumbersome weight loss program, even though it sounds right. pretty cool and probably works, but that didn't work. But then like you said, that was not, okay, well, then I guess I'm done with weight loss. I guess I won't teach health and wellness anymore. Right. You didn't do that. You kept evolving, and now you have your own program. So, so kind of talk a little bit about that, because you really are a master of change. You're willing to overcome the challenges, defeat the circumstances, and get to that point where you have the thing that God had for you. Yeah, well, I think uh, really a lot of it, I've learned a lot of it from you and, and from just other, you know, have you ever read a book where you, you've invested weeks and weeks into this book and you got one line that was transformational for you and that was enough. So I, it's just kind of a matter of um, like when you were, I think, mentioning about when you first released Body by God and you want nothing to do with weight loss. Well, and I, I had that perspective too, because for so many reasons, you know, you think of all the obstacles, it's oversaturated, it's who cares about another one more thing when there's millions of things people could do. And I think those can be real stumbling blocks to us because again, it's this, this is more about you and him sometimes. It's more about that vertical, will I do what you're telling me to do even if it doesn't make sense and I think it's unimportant and all of that. So I think just watching kind of your perspective on taking one thing and making it better, um, you know, and how do I improve on this thing that I've got and how do I diversify and how do I stay in a place of peace and rest and still keep another ball up in the air. And, and really it's because it, it, it's not about us. It's, it's, if we rely on our own willpower, our own strength, yes, we will keep one, maybe two balls up in the air and that's it. <laughs> so, but when you are living through him, when you're letting him live in you, you can accomplish more than you ever thought you could. Um, and a lot of times it's because he gives you not really, not even so much a strategy. I mean, he does give us strategies for sure. He's giving you a ton of strategies that I've learned from, but he also just gives us a different imagination for the future, a different creation for our future than what looks like is possible. And, and again, that comes down to that trust. Do we trust that he really is faithful and that he really can do all things, not just some things? And when we operate from that position, we'll take steps that look crazy, <laughs> you know? Um, so, yeah, I think, I think, you know, what we're going to talk about in Michigan is cultivating creative resilience. And I think part of that perspective comes from obstacles. You know how we can be sometimes so quick to remove obstacles from our children. And I think we got to watch that. You know, not that you go creating them. <laughs> Don't create them. I'm not saying that because life will do enough of that on its own. But I think sometimes we, we forget that every obstacle in the end, God will use for our good and his glory. Every one of them, even the ones that are so painful, you never would choose to go through them again. Um, so he'll, he'll certainly use the good things that happen, but he'll also take every experience and every situation that you've ever been through. And if you let him, he will end up using it for your good and his glory and to help other people ultimately. 
Well, and I, the, you just you just coined a phrase. I'm real. I, resilience is my favorite topic, and I've done a lot of study, even psychology. There are a lot of papers written on it. There's whole books. But you said creative resilience, which is really powerful, and, and is is a great descriptor of, of who, who you are as a human being and a, and a force on planet Earth. That we not just we as we go through these resilient events, or if we choose to become resilient through our challenges and events and get creative from it, it really does do what you're saying. We just keep using all things for good. So God tells us, for those of us who love him and have been called according to his purposes, he uses all things for good. Um, I pray that for my kids every day before they leave the house, that anything you've been through to this, up to this point and everything you'll experience today is going to be used for your good and for God's glory, as you also mentioned, for you achieving your purposes and fulfilling your destiny, that that is the process. And it really is this creative resilience, getting more and more creative, regardless of what gets thrown in your path. Because you know, I know you've been through a lot of things, like all the successes you have, it'd be great to say, oh, look how successful Dr. Cowley is. But you know, there's been a lot in your path that could have easily gotten you to say, okay, I'm done, or I guess that didn't work, or I guess that's impossible. You know, that's the opposite of creative resilience is just to decide the obstacles are actually stopping you or maybe even indication from God to not do it anymore. Yeah. Or, or like, like the book that I love says, the obstacle is the way. It's actually what gives you the creativity and produces in you, develops you into something that can accomplish some great will of God. So that, that's, uh, that's very powerful. Last, last thing I'd love you to touch on, because and this is something, you haven't said this to me, but it's something that just observing you that I, that I believe to be true. You're really looking to be a leader, you know, a community leader, a, a head of wellness uh, at the top, not the bottom of the church. You know, like you're going, you know, you really talk to me a lot about going out and being a church speaker, you know, on the circuit, somebody churches are bringing in, somebody that corporations are bringing in to teach about health, wellness, weight loss, being a chiropractic leader. And, and that is another mindset. I and mean, you have this very powerful mindset, enormous faith and a great spirit. And that's why you're continuing to achieve and achieve and achieve and create and create. So, so what, what is that like? That's a distinction, right? Like, you know, you do a lot of coaching. There are people like, I'm just going to do stuff. Or the, there are those that say, I'm going to lead stuff. I'm going to be in charge and get out there and be a respected person in, in my field. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about that. Oh, this, I mean, that's such a great question. I, I guess in processing that, I don't think I ever set out to do that. I don't necessarily think consciously um, I was thinking that. I think it just sort of organically, I, I love to help people believe for bigger and better. Um, I love to show people, hey, this is the way, go this way. So I guess in light of that, sure, that that's leadership, but it's more like, I mean, never desired to like get up and like be the front person kind of thing. I guess that's not a big desire, um, but I want to see people free. I think the underlying motive there, the need behind the need is I hate bondage. I hate it in any area. I can't stand seeing people live that way. And um, whether it's in their thinking or, you know, their finances or their faith walk, or, you know, I hate it in myself. I hate it in my clients. I hate it in other Kairos. I hate it in my kids. I just hate bondage because I don't believe it's God's will. And so um, anything that points to freedom in any area that I found freedom in, I want to share that with someone else and kind of, you know, reach, help them reach. And I think ultimately when that started, really, uh, I lost my brother to suicide. And I remember my first prayer at that point was to make the enemy pay for taking him. Like, use me, whatever you're going to do through him, do 10 times that through me and don't let me quit until that happens. So I think part of it is righteous anger. <laughs> you know, if I had to look at it, honestly, that's what, probably what, part of the day, you know, that's whatever probably... it takes, whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah, no, I just can't stand um, people living in anything less than what Christ has for them. So, wow, that's really good. That's, that's so good. Yeah, yeah. And again, like I said, truly, whatever it takes. I've got some very successful people that they're competitive. Uh, they, you know, they don't like seeing others in front of them, especially when they believe they could do more than that other person. Our righteous anger is not a bad one. Um, 
Uh, a term I coined is called compassionate, where we're compassionate about people and it pisses us off that what's happening to them. So that's what drives us. I um, love that. Yep. Yeah. But they, so thank you for sharing. This, this is really powerful. Just, you know, again, I, I'm not surprised that what's going on in your mind is a real indicator of uh, why you're so successful and just, you just keep going. Uh, you're going to be a, a huge, huge value at this Michigan event. So for those of you that are watching, don't miss that Michigan event. It's going to be life transforming. Uh, Dr. Callie, looking forward to having you there. Thanks for being on today. Uh, bless you, everybody. And remember who you are.